job for the milling machine today. This um this is the spindle ah uh, sorry, this is the quill from the tailstock of the lathe. And there's been a long problem with it. This keyway sort of leans downwards towards the bottom. It's it's kind of on a ramp like that. And it means that the set screw which does the the work of preventing this from rotating in the tailstock, um, it it basically has the effect of pulling upwards, and so it allows it to rotate as the tailstock gets further and further, the, the quill gets extended further. It's uh, far from ideal, and so it's been a long-term plan to get it fixed, and um, now I think I've got the the everything in place to be able to fix it. Um, the actual positioning of the slot is not really... it doesn't look like it's all that critical. I mean, if the, 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 the slot isn't aligned with any keyways or anything like that, it's purely a grub screw pushing against this edge here. Um, so I can probably get away with just uh, the following setup um, to prevent, well, to, to make sure that the, the slot is parallel to the rest of the bore along here. I'm just gonna sit it in the T slots like this. The T slots are a little messy, but you know what? I'll clean them. I'll clean them after the, between cuts. Um, so sit it between T slots because. The, the bottom of this slot feels like it's it's kind of wobbly like the surface of the moon um, I'm gonna I'm gonna use a, a piece of small high-speed steel I think this is 3 sixteenths about four millimeters and if I've, I'll, I'll dig around see if I can find one that's slightly better or maybe even make a small gauge block stack um, shove it in here and then set up two gauge blocks one on either side and put parallel uh, put a parallel across the top so that it's roughly um, so it's roughly sort of aligned this way um, I'm just gonna do it by eye because trigonometry is gonna work in my favor here if this if the gap on this side here closely matches the gap on this side here then the bottom of the cutter is going to be cutting relatively parallel to here. Um, it's look, I think it's not it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be better than what it was. There's a long-term fix for the tailstock that's that's planned, um, and this is going to ho hopefully improve the situation. Until then, so next cut we'll have the table cleaned up. Back at the table, it's looking a lot cleaner aside from the corners. Um, I was wondering, which T-slot do I want to use to actually align this? Because in terms of alignment, I want to make sure that the tilt on it is aligned flat like that. But I also want to make sure that this alignment... Well, this alignment is pretty much taken care of by the slots. But I want to make sure that it doesn't tilt up or down. And so I thought, alright... This slot here looks like it's in, in pretty good nick compared to the number of holes from the former owner of this machine. Um, why not try here? And so I put I put the quill into this slot and ran it along and that sounds like train tracks going over a bump it means that there's probably a bump. And I can see a very slight this is this feels like I run my fingernail across it and I can actually feel it lifting up so uh, looking at it close it looks like maybe the former owner tried to repair this and it's it's lifting a bit high so I'm gonna need to stone that back but not today this this track uh, this slot on the other hand feels feels and sounds very smooth so the smoothness probably means it's alright. Um, this 
this track is totally unusable because of an accident uh, that, yeah, I made a mistake on my very first day of running the machine. I didn't have uh, the collar tight enough and the cutter pulled down. Uh, but yeah, next step is to get the rocking, the, the rocking here sorted out. So I'll set up the airplane for that. So this is the setup I've got. It's probably the most number of gauge blocks I've ever done in a single setup. Um, and like, well, that's mostly because it's all coming from a single set. Um, if I had two sets, then I could minimize the amount of error in here. This is actually going to a, a lot more um, effort than I was originally thinking of doing, I, I, but it turned into if it's worth doing, it's probably worth doing properly. Um, I can push down here or down here and there's no movement. I can push down on either end of the the um, parallel and there's no movement and there's no movement. Well, this is the the quill is now clamped down, but there was no movement in um, in the quill rotating either. Um, and then this can just slide out and I can start packing this up because it's clamped down and hopefully it's not moving. This is what it looks like from the top. Um, and you can sort of see why I called it the airplane before. So this is the setup before the cut. We've got two clamps on here. The um, cutter is set to just scratching the bottom of the keyway at this end, which is the low end, and it should make it fairly parallel to the plane of the table. The cutter speed is set for a thousand RPM. It is a it is a five sixteenths Niagara cutter, high speed steel, and this one comes from um it's a four flute one. This one comes from the Keith Fennel What's in Your Box. So this is a this is going to be the first time I've run this, and um, and I'm pretty excited for it. A huge thank you to Keith for being able to make this happen. No shots of the actual machining because it's hard to run a machine and hold a phone at the same time, and I'd rather not risk doing bad damage to things. Um, yeah, I figured. I was afraid that this might be hardened steel, and um, back here at this end, a file certainly touched it, but as I got deeper and deeper in, um, well, there was a very sudden change around about here, and the cutter just wouldn't cut. I think, um, I think probably it needs carbide that, that can cut this, um, but it's not actually a problem um, because when I've got a what this is Morse taper 3 when I've got a tail stock uh, when I've got a, a, a taper in here it basically can't extend past about 16 millimeters uh, sorry it can't retract basically less than 16 millimeters into the into the tail stock um, so it's roughly where this um, where this divot is here. It's actually closer to 12 millimeters. I've already fitted it, and the um, the screw, the the set screw that prevents this from rocking, is a lot more. It it behaves a lot better than it should. It's still far from ideal, uh, but it's gonna do until I can until I can implement a fix for the, the the tailstock. I'm thinking a rack and pinion style like what Stefan Gotteswinter has on his lathe, which is a very similar model to mine. This is sort of what I meant here. The, the set screw is pretty far back and I can I can crank the, the quill into around about 12 millimeters before that hard spot. Oh, what is that? 
it's more like 14 millimeters. Um, 14 millimeters or a little bit over a half inch, but that's okay because most of my Moss Taper 3 tooling, um, I've put I've put some screws that I've turned, so just some cap screws that I've turned the the shoulder down on. So it's basically a really large set screw. I've turned them down, turned them down, and they they slot in, and they ejected around about 16 millimeters. So it's it's not even a problem for ejecting the the tapers anymore. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, overall it feels a lot smoother too. Um, before there were periods where it was loose and sloppy and then it would tighten up and I often thought that it was the um, the the quill lock here but no it was just the lunar surface in the bottom of that slot. So overall I'm pretty happy with the results. Um, even if they weren't sort of ideal they're still good enough to to get by until I can do the the um, rack and pinion feed, which will use a proper keyway.